wake of Brexit. Oh my God. And recent terror attacks. The UK has seen a rise in the number of reported crimes motivated by hate. Figures from the Home Office show there were more than 80,000 hate crimes reported between April 2016 and March 2017. That's an increase of nearly 30% on the previous 12 months, and the largest year-to-year -year increase since records began five years ago. Nearly 80% of the reported hate crimes were based on race, 11% were based on sexual orientation, and 7% were based on religion. The Home Office says there was a spike in hate crimes following the UK's referendum to leave the European Union, with many of the crimes directed at the UK's Polish community. I lived here for over 30 years and I have never encountered any racism. Uh, this is quite shocking. There's concern that as the deadline for Brexit gets closer, these hate crimes will intensify. Hate crimes also increased following a series of terror attacks in the UK in the last year. Muslims were increasingly targeted in the period just after the attacks in Westminster, London Bridge and Manchester. Sadly, we've seen an increase in reports of hate crime uh, from 28 on Monday, which is our normal average for a day, through to 56 uh, on Wednesday. Whilst we can't directly link these to the events of Monday night, we're continuing to monitor the situation and support our communities. While these figures paint a picture of the UK as a hotbed of growing hate and intolerance, that may not be the case. The data may instead be a sign of a greater public awareness of what a hate crime is. Almost any verbal or physical assault can be categorised as such if the victim interprets it that way. There have also been improvements in how law enforcement records and deals with allegations of hate crimes. And as they are seen to be taken more seriously, people are more comfortable speaking out because they feel they will be listened to. My message to anyone who's the victim of hate crime is please report it to the police. Don't think it's too trivial. Don't think the police will take action. They will. Is the UK's increase in reported hate crime a manifestation of rising anti-immigrant and Islamophobic sentiment, or is it a sign of a greater intolerance of hate-filled crimes? Yvette McCullough, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined from London by Lee Jasper. He advised the former London Mayor, Ken Livingstone, on race and equality. Also in London is Andrew Gilligan. He's a senior correspondent for The Sunday Times. Gentlemen, I thank you very much for joining us on The Newsmakers. Lee Jasper, let me begin with you. Sir, why so much hate in the UK? Well, I think certainly we can point to uh, the Brexit referendum decision, the recent terrorist attacks, all uh, adding to uh, and raising the profile of uh, race hate attacks here in the United Kingdom. But it's very clearly there's an underlying trend of increased vandalism. There are uh, race attacks a bit like the uh, incidents of rape and the reporting of rape is vastly under-recorded. So the vast majority of race hate crimes have traditionally not been reported. So if the figures are increasing, I think that what that reveals is an underlying trend uh, of increased uh, racial vitriol. Uh, and thankfully, most of this is vandalism uh, uh, transit racism, uh, people being uh, abused on buses or trains, uh, uh, attacks on uh, places of worship, whether that's Jewish cemeteries or whether it's Muslim mosques. Uh, uh, but it, undoubtedly, when you talk to Asian, uh, black and Polish communities, what you hear is that people are experiencing a greater level of uh, random stranger, uh, uh, racist, religious abuse than had previously been mm -hmm. the case prior to the Brexit referendum. So I think the government figures are revealing. I don't think it's an issue of increased confidence in the police because black and particularly Muslim communities' confidence levels in the Metropolitan <clears throat> Police Service, as recorded by the Metropolitan Police in their uh, confidence uh, uh, interval surveys, is the lowest it's ever been uh, since... Uh, uh, well, since uh, Met Police uh, record, recorded these things. Right. So, so it, it can't okay. be increased confidence. Okay. Okay. Andrew Gilligan, 
Let's bring you in here. So is that a, a sound, plausible theory that there's been this underlying hate I on, on, you know, there's the race hate and so on, and Brexit opened the floodgates, perhaps? I, I think some of the increase is definitely real. Um, and there were some very, Brexit unleashed some very nasty sentiments in, in some of the public. Um, but uh, I also think it's partly due, as your reporter said, to people's increased willingness to report it. And it's also partly due, I think we need to remember, to the internet. Um, a very large number of these hate crimes are online abuse. Um, and what we know is that in all forms of life, in all forms of discourse, people are much more uninhibited, they're much nastier, they're much, um, they're, they're much less restrained on the internet, on social media, than they are in real life. And I think if you, I, I think the, the arrival of social media, Facebook, Twitter, the rest of it, has driven down the level of discourse, has increased mm -hmm. people's willingness to, to say hateful things, which, which wouldn't have gone recorded before and wouldn't be capable of investigation. So don't underestimate the enormous contribution the internet has made to the spread of hate-filled sentiments. And of course, the other thing about the internet, Twitter, is it's often anonymous. Right. Um, so that, that's a key factor in, 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 the, in the rise of hate crime. Uh, and reporting is a key factor, but I also do think there's been a real rise, and, uh, and it's disturbing. Okay, so let me ask you, Lee, do we have a problem then with the parameters as well, who gets to decide it, and the subjectivity of it all? So, for example, on Twitter, I've been called all sorts of terrible names on Twitter. I usually laugh about it and respond to the troll. For somebody else, they are deeply offended by it, and it hurts them, and they might report it as a hate crime. So, should we be factoring in those digital elements and parameters as well, that it becomes quite subjective. One person's hate crime is just somebody else's noisy internet troll. Well, for a long time in British uh, uh, policing history and the history of the courts, there was this uh, subjectivity uh, uh, around the definition of hate crime. And we've had lots of debate uh, following the uh, tragic murder of Stephen uh, Lawrence in the early 90s and the subsequent inquiry to define that. I think that uh, uh, certainly there are individuals like you and I on Twitter who bat away uh, 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 abusive trolls uh, uh, without uh, a consequence of it. But I know somebody else who, uh, uh, who did exactly the same thing uh, and found Britain first, a, a, a quite violent uh, quasi-fascist organisation, turning up on their doorstep. Uh, so I think that uh, it's uh, one rule can't be applied to absolutely everything. And of course, each complaint has to be taken within its own context. An individual that has been subjected to, to horrible intimidation and racist attacks may well have a Lawrence, Lawrence, lower tolerance level uh, than you and I. Mm -hmm. But can I address the point about uh, internet raising the incidence of reporting? Certainly. Because I think the uh, social media is actually reflecting uh, the level of racism that has always been out there. Even uh, uh, throughout the years that I've been campaigning on this issue, Home Office research studies always talk about the vast reservoir of unreported crimes that take place uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I think that uh, internet is really uh, reflecting what uh, black and Muslim ethnic minorities in the United Kingdom, particularly the, the visible ones, have been experiencing for 20 or 30 years. It has now become much more visible because of the internet. But it is not as a consequence of the internet. That's reflecting uh, what was a, a, a consistent reservoir of xenophobia and racism in the United Kingdom that has uh, persistently affected the lives of minorities uh, uh, over the last uh, mm -hmm. 20 or 30 years. So, Andrew Gilligan, has this Home Office report just that, that, exposed yeah. the U UK as being a racist, bigoted society? Well, it depends on how you measure it. I mean, by most measures, things like the proportion of mixed marriages, um, the level of serious racial violence, um, the UK's pretty unracist by comparison with a lot of societies. We, we don't have um, any of the overtly racist parties, some of which are actually now in government that continental European countries have. We have, uh, we have black and, uh, and Asian MPs elected for almost all white constituencies without suffering any kind of um, drop in their vote. Uh, we, the, the kind of campaigns you see in, on the continent of Europe for banning the niqab and banning um, minarets at mosques and things 
have absolutely no traction here. So, you know, we, we, um, we, by, by those sort of standards, I think we're a significantly less racist society um, than, than many others. But um, that doesn't mean we should be complacent. Mo mm -hmm. Most of the hate crime reported is at the very low end of the scale. Um, there, are, there have been a few very serious racist incidents and a few, there's been one attack. Um, there was an attack of terrorism, of course, against the Finsbury Park Mosque a, a few months ago. Um, and there's been a couple of other uh, pl uh, uh, incidents where people have been killed because of their race, but they are very, very few. The vast majority of these hate crimes are, are often quite, quite small. And, and in some cases, I think there are a few. You, look, you dig down into the statistics, and I found, for instance, that uh, several hundred bicycle thefts have been reported as a hate crime. Now, it's quite hard to see how the theft of a bicycle could be a hate crime, but the... Uh, the, Lee talked about the subjectivity of it, and it is subjective, because as, as your reporter said, um, a, a hate crime is defined as any, cr uh, any crime which is perceived by the victim as a hate crime. So if the mm -hmm. victim says, my bicycle's been stolen and that's a hate crime, then it has to be recorded as a hate crime, even though most people wouldn't really see the theft of a bicycle as a hate crime. Lee, is a stolen bicycle a hate crime? Well, it depends if you're uh, the subject of a volley of uh, religious or racist abuse uh, <laughs> during the commission of that theft. You may well, well be. Well, that, that's a separate offence, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, as a Clearly, that, that's, that's racial abuse. That's well, a different thing. Well, it's a separate... Thing. It's a separate... Nobody would... Nobody would see that was a, uh, but, it's but, still, but just, it, you know, having your bike nicked from well, the street is not a hate crime, is it? But, but some people are reported well, I mean, it as such, but, and they're allowed to, and, you know, um, because it's... Uh, they, no, you know, I hate don't think crime that, is anything that the victim My understanding of is... Well, My understanding is quite simply this. That's the definition. But the prosecution, which goes through the Crown Prosecution Service filter, weeds out and delineates uh, 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 claims that have no foundation. Yeah, sure, we're not talking about the prosecutions, though, are we? are talking about of reports well, of offences yeah, here. Well, we're talking about reports of offences, but prosecutions... I mean, these, these figures aren't for uh, prosecutions, they are reported offences, uh, and so clearly well, yeah, yeah, they do include a number yeah, of offences which need to be able to find a hate crime, even though you <laughs> might not be, be strictly <laughs> seen as such. OK, finish up, Lee. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is that uh, it depends what happens in the commission of, of those crimes. Uh, certainly, if it's a, a simple bike theft, but that forms a pattern of behaviour uh, that followed your door being, uh, 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 you know, smeared with uh, dog feces or your children being abused on their way to school or whatever, then it might seem on its own like nothing to do with hate crime. But in the context of a series of incidents, it might well form part of a targeted intimidation, targeted victimization. So one can't simply just dismiss uh, the reporting of these hate crimes in isolation as having, n uh, apparently, uh, superficially, having nothing to do with okay. hate crime without understanding the context okay. in which those crimes have taken place. Let me ask you, Andrew, the Assistant Chief Constable Mark Hamilton, the National Police Chief's uh, Council lead for hate crime, said, quote, I will be working alongside the government to strengthen our nationally coordinated response to hate crime. So he said this in, in response to the report. I wonder what, what can they actually do to strengthen their approach to this without kind of policing everybody and making sure that nobody says anything out of turn? Tell me. I, I don't know is the answer. I think the, um, I, I think sometimes this isn't, I'm sure this isn't the case in the vast majority of reports. The vast majority of reports, I'm sure, are sincere and, and, and you know, whether they're hate crime or not, the, pe the person concerned feels that they are hate crime. But I have to say that in some cases, um, extremist groups um, use allegations of Islamophobia particularly to try and intimidate and, uh, and smear those who criticise them. And, uh, and I would be worried if um, the police... I mean, there, there was a famous incident where... Uh, um, a, a, a kind of um, a sort of rent a quote Islamist who got on the radio a lot um, called Mo Ansar tried to report um, the host of a radio program for racism for asking him awkward questions um, and it's that kind of um, nonsense that I, I'd be a bit worried if the police was uh, mm. were, 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 were to start investigating every allegation of of racism and Islamophobia put about by kind of highly politically motivated people. Right. But that, I stress, is a minority. Right. So, so, Lee, does making it easier to report hate crimes, again, going to the text of the law when it comes to that which you perceive to be a hate crime? So Mo Ansar feels that what might be legitimate criticism against him uh, might be a hate crime. Do you believe that it's an incorrect 
um, allocation of police resources to go and investigate Mo Ansar's uh, point of view now because he feels somebody hurt his feelings? Well, I don't know the details of Mo Ansar's case. He may well feel justified. I know him, uh, uh, and I can't think he would make anything other than a justified complaint. But putting that aside, because those are, as Andrew has already conceded, the uh, uh, extremes in relation to uh, uh, race hate, I think that the law can only do so much in any event. I think that what you need to take into account is that when politicians uh, make the sort of commentary that demonizes communities, uh, uh, that ramps up uh, 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 concerns around immigration, immigration benefit cheats, uh, mad mullers, uh, black criminality, and so on and so forth. What, what they're doing is giving license to a, uh, a, 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 a a strong cultural trait within British culture, which is both xenophobic, uh, racist, uh, usually sexist and sometimes anti-Semitic. Uh, and it's that kind of irresponsible talk uh, by our leading politicians and sections of the media, certainly not all the media, but there are some sections who uh, forever bang the drum about how terrible migrants are, how terrible multiculturalisms are, uh, how terrible having Muslims in the country is, uh, and how cr innately criminal uh, black youth are. These are the kind of national commentaries that provide the context okay. for increased racism so, and so, racism. So and let me take loose that talk by politicians and the media okay. literally cost people's lives. Okay, so Andrew, very finally, how do we put that genie back in the bottle? Don't you have to kind of reform the whole society to do that? I'd be very surprised if, if any of the media have ever claimed that black people are innately criminal outside the kind of national front news or something. That's just not been said. Um, or, or that migrants are all wicked and wrong. I mean, it's not racist to oppose greater immigration, as, as has been said. Um, and I don't think anyone has said that migrants are, are all criminals or, or, or evil. So I think Lee's exaggerating. The, the Daily Mail has come um, pretty I, close. I think some the questions, Daily some Mail difficult questions have to be Sun discussed here. Have certainly become difficult. Well, and LBC's well, another, another some, No, some difficult questions. So there are, uh, there are examples. Lee, some difficult questions have to be discussed about, 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 um, about bigoted and uh, patriarchal, racist and, and uh, uh, exclusionist attitudes in parts of some communities and, and to do so is not racist and equally some difficult issues such as child sex grooming in northern towns um, have, has to be discussed and hasn't been discussed. Pedophilia amongst the white community, afraid of being Jimmy Savile et al. Sure, and that's and, and I think that, this is the not, particularism that bedevils this it, debate. And, and I think that there is a no, no, there is, no. There is but those a, there are is not the those are not the vast majority of cases. Middle ground. I, I don't think that the I don't think that the majority of the media. Uh, I think majority of the media discusses race in a in a pretty responsible way, and I think we need we 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 mustn't be afraid to discuss issues that need discussing. Mm. Okay. The fear of being accused of racism. And, and I'm glad we've had this discussion on this program. Think... Lee, Lee, I've got to I've got to wrap you because I have to move on. So I, I sincerely apologise, but Lee Jasper and Andrew Gilligan, I've enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.